Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Brit of Green Beret, on location here in the Poconos, actually, in Pennsylvania. Uh, brought with me my field sharpening kit and wanted to do a follow-up on my last video on sharpening a dull knife, you know, actually sharpening the knife in my garage before I come out to the field. Uh, did not bring that same knife. I actually have a different knife for me, uh, with me here in the Poconos. Uh, I'm going to be using the GB2 Puko, which uh, you know probably have seen this in my communities tab, but you probably haven't seen it in person. But this is the GB2 Puko. All right, uh, Puko is one of my favorite styles. Uh, this particular one is 1095 with a forged finish, uh, full Scandi grind. It's got a contoured broomstick handle. An exposed tang, which I like. I kind of borrowed that from the Garberg and a couple of other knives that I like that have that. Uh, but this is the GB2 Puko. It is not available at the moment yet. Uh, this is the only one out there. But that contoured broomstick handle, I kind of borrowed from. It's sort of more a classic, uh, sort of uh, more a Garberg. Uh, but the goal being that no matter which direction I hold this in, the grip is exactly the same. So I like that contoured broomstick handle. Full Scandi. And this particular one is the one I'm going to be using for this video. So this is the GB2 Puko. Should be available sometime the beginning of 2020. Uh, but this is uh, probably, you know, my favorite knife because I've actually designed it and made it for myself. Uh, 1095 steel. Just a very simple design. The Puko style with the continuous curve really lends itself to, you know, hogging wood if I want to, or just feathering off wood if I don't want to hog it off. So, uh, really easy to use. So this is the one that I'm going to be using. I like to sharpen once if I ever have to at all, if it doesn't come sharp out of the package. I sharpen once and then from there I just maintain it by honing and polishing it with the leather strop the rest of the time I have the knife. And that tends to work out really well as long as I don't damage it somehow in the field, which can happen. No matter how careful you are, sometimes things like that can happen, and you've gotta be able to, to take care of that and take it back to the stones. But taking it to the stones for no reason just wears away material you didn't need to wear away. So stick around, I'm gonna show you real quick my field sharpening kit and how I take care of and maintain my knives in the field. Inside my, my actual tool roll here, I've got a couple of things to take care of, any nicks or dings or anything that I need uh, outside of just honing and polishing if I actually need to you know take care of a nick I've got a very small needle file that I keep inside here I've also got a DC4 stone from Fall Niven uh, and that's got what I would consider kind of a uh, medium and a fine stone a medium and fine grit so they can take care of any uh, any damage that I need to in the field but I rarely if ever need to use those what I have for most routine honing and polishing uh, of the knife, keeping it ready to go all the time, is just this butts paddle strop and some Tormex paste, which you would have saw in my last video. And if I'm worried about anything like uh, corrosion from uh, the carbon steel knives, depending on where I'm at, I may need to tap into a small bottle of olive oil that I keep in there. This is just a little cotton rag, a little shop rag that I use to wipe that on the blade. Uh, and any surface rust that surface rust that gets away from me, I need to get off there. I may use this super fine steel wool, which has also got other purposes as well. But for the most part, that's just for scouring the knife really quick. Uh, if I'm carrying an ax or a hatchet or a hawk, then I'll add a puck to this mix, uh, but it doesn't fit in the tool roll and I'm not carrying one right now, so I don't have that on display here. For the most part, this is my field sharpening kit. I've got a small needle file, my full knife and DC4, uh, my Tormex paste with my butts paddle strap, some olive oil in a bottle with a little bit of cotton rag, and some steel wool. So typically this butts paddle strap is the one that I'm using most often for my field maintenance. So it's got a flat surface here that obviously I've got a lot of Tormex paste on there and you know some folks will tell you it loses effectiveness with all of this uh, so you need to scrape this off and start from scratch. I'm not so convinced that that's necessary uh, but yeah if you do get a good build up because this is all the metal that you're leaving behind then you can scrape that off rub it off with an eraser 
kind of get it more to this side, which is, uh, which is basically just a raw uh, pig skin. Uh, but anyway, you can, you can reset this by doing that. Uh, this one's getting pretty built up, but so far I haven't noticed any difference in performance, so I'm not gonna take the time to scrape off that paste uh, and start new. Uh, so flat surface, this side also has a flat surface, but it also has this bevel right here, which is really good for scandy grinds, and I'll show you that here in a second. And then this side is contoured, it's round, which is really good for the inside of your crooked knives, like your spoon knives. Uh, so this all around is, is an outstanding paddle strop, uh, and the one that I like the most. I'll show you how, to, how I use these to polish really quick to keep the stones off of my knives for as long as possible. Now keep in mind this Puko is already fairly sharp. What I'm doing is maintaining the edge with just a little touch up, just a honing, just a, a polishing of the edge. But it's already fairly sharp, but it still catches a little bit. One of the drawbacks to the full Scandi, it has a, de a more delicate edge on there because it doesn't have that secondary bevel, but I like that. Uh, I prefer the precision that I get out of that over a secondary bevel, uh, but it does take some maintenance. You can see it catches just a little bit on there. So I want to get rid of that. Now sometimes in the field it can be a little bit diff difficult to find a flat surface to put your strop on, uh, but if you do have a flat surface that you can use that'll help stabilize that, then the technique's not much different from when you're in the shop. You find and index that bevel, and then while you stay on that bevel, you drag the knife across the strop and follow that curve all the way up to the tip. And I'll typically do for my stropping, just like I do for my bench sharpening, I'll typically do 10 per side. And again, I'm indexing and I'm dragging away from the edge and I'm turning the knife to maintain contact with the tip all the way to the end. Do that slow a couple more times. Once I get to 10 on that side, then I'll flip back over to the other side. Nine, nine, eight, eight, seven, seven, all the way down to one. When I get down to one, I'll do it alternating from one side to the other for another 10 or so. Now alternatively, since this is a single bevel, this is a true Scandi, I can follow this beveled edge with on the strop, and it's a lot easier to maintain contact with that edge throughout the strokes. I'll do 10 strokes on that. And then switch sides. Now another technique that I'll use, especially on an area where I don't really have uh, a flat level surface that I can put the strop on, is instead of holding the strop still and using the knife to drag across that strop, what I'll do is I'll use the knife stationary like this. I'll pin it to my leg, keep in mind on the outside of your thigh or forward of the knee, not inside your triangle of death. So I'll try to put this in an angle to where you can see what I'm doing here, but I'll pin that knife as stable as possible at the angle that I want, and I'll use the paddle in relation to what I would, I would use, I'll use the paddle in relation to that angle to push away from the edge and follow that contour with the paddle, keeping this in place. And the leather is forgiving enough to where I'm not gonna do any damage doing this. So I can go 10 strokes on one side and as I'm pushing it away from that edge, I'm also going along that contour 
and as I get towards that tip, it's very easy for me to feel when it starts to come off and turn the paddle to follow that curve. We'll do that slow a couple times. Flip it over, and same thing. Drag it towards the tip, turning this as needed to stay along that edge. Ten. A lot of times this is faster for me. The key is to keep this as stable as possible and to stay on the contour with the paddle. Uh, but for folks that are having a, a hard time, especially up here towards the front side of the blade towards the tip, if you're having problems with that, this may be a good technique for you to use. I find that it's a lot easier to stay on that contour when I can turn the entire paddle to follow it. Anyway, uh, that was nine. I'm gonna finish this series out. <laughs> Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Three, two, and one. Alternate about 10 times for that final polishing. So really once it's sharpened, and then we do that before you come out, once it's sharpened, it really only takes a little touch up in the field. I probably spent, you know, that last 30 seconds to a minute on this drop with that, that 10 down to one series that I try to do with, with all of my sharpening just to keep the muscle memory there and keep, you know, keep consistent um, is really all you need to keep it, you know, hair popping sharp in the field. So just polishing it, just maintaining it, just honing it. Uh, that's really all you need to do in the field. So save your knife, keep it off the stones as much as possible. Get yourself a good butt strop with some Tormex paste and maintain it in the field after every few days or so, um, as often as you want really, uh, because it really doesn't remove a lot of material, it just kind of realigns everything and, and polishes it to reduce friction as it's going through material. Uh, so anyway, uh, highly recommended this and some Tormex paste really what you need in the field. DC4 stone, throw that in your tool roll just in case you do some damage uh, and need to fix that. Flight tickets. Let's see how that's doing now. Not bad at all. Pretty happy with that. Anyway, works good. I'm gonna pick all that up. All right, guys, that is it. That is what I do for my field sharpening, maintaining my knives in the field. As always, as always, when I'm trying to finish out a video, there's an airplane flying over. Uh, so I guess I'm saved.
looking like they're doing circles over me. Skater. I think that aircraft might have a sign on it, dragging behind it, you know, as they're flying through the air. It says like, GB2, we love you. We love to ruin your videos. Anyway, good enough. As always, appreciate your views, your likes, your shares, your comments, and your questions. Put those below. Until next time, hope to see you in the woods.